Coming up on Sports Pause, men's basketball, they took on Niagara this weekend. See how they fare. Men's hockey had a big two-game weekend as they took on Union and RPI. And women's ice hockey view reporter Anthony Rossi is in studio to talk about the upcoming ECAC tournament. All that and more starting right now on Sports Pause. Good evening and welcome to Sports Pause. I'm Andrew Reynolds. And I'm Zach Stokinger. We start tonight's show with breaking news coming from Lender Court. One Bobcats coach has just agreed to stick around in Hamden for a few more years. Coach Tom Cor of the Quinnipiac men's basketball team has been locked up to a four-year contract. Tom Pacora has the team in first place in the MAC with an 11-3 record. They have a 19-6 record overall. The Bobcats had an eventful weekend while Niagara came to town. As I just said, on Sunday, Niagara took on the Bobcats in Hamden. Let's roll the tape. All right, Sunday matinee matchup between the top two teams in the MAC. Let's head to the first half as we see a lot of great fundamental passing for the Bobcats. Matt Belock will drive. He looks for someone, and he's going to find Amari Tyson in the left wing, and he cashes that three. Now, a few minutes later, we have Niagara's Braxton Bayless driving into the paint. He pulls up from mid-range. He drains that bucket. Matt Belonk now, he's looking. JJ Ricketts, big screen. Matt Belonk cashes that three. Now in transition, we have Dre Bullock. We'll find Damar Kelly for the buzzer beater. Heading into half, tied at 37. Now in the second half, Matt, second, Matt Henderson, the second, excuse me, finds Bullock. Bullock hits that three. He'll end the game with 26 points. Bobcats trying to answer his block, stops, gets bullet, dancing, and he'll tie the game. Now, Henderson the second goes down right here. Doug Young blocks him right there. And as we get the transition going, Doug Young will fall right there, but he finds Paul Oceano. He gets that big layup right there. Bobcats now go on a run. His block spins. He finds Young wide open. Cash! What a big three right there. Now we have Quan A. Marvel the second. He'll dribble around, he floats it up. Oh, he gets it. I don't even know how that happened. The final score of that game will be 80 to 66 behind Bullock and Bayless's top score. And Matt Belonk with a respectable 22. After just one game for the Bobcats this weekend, let's see how the MAC standings look. The Bobcats maintain their number one spot in the MAC with an 11 and three conference record. Fairfield and Niagara are right on the Bobcats tail, tied for second with a 10 and five record. Marist takes up the fourth spot with a nine and five record. St. Peter's is fifth with a record of 9 and 6. Six goes to Iona with an 8 and 6 record. The Mount and Ryder are tied for seventh with the 7 and 8 records. And at the bottom, we have Canisius, Siena, and Manhattan. For the fourth consecutive season, a Bobcat has been named as a Mike Richter sem Award semifinalist. This year, it's Vinny DuPlessis, named to the list as a senior netminder. After transferring from Boston University last season, DuPlessis has posted goal uh, goals above average of 1.92 points and three shutouts so far, leaving him top five in the country in both categories. The finalists will be selected in March with the award now announcement coming in the Frozen Four weekend in St. Paul, Minneapolis, Minnesota in early April. The Quinnipiac men's ice hockey team continued ECAC play with a game against Union on Friday night. Let's roll the tape. Quinnipiac back at home to take Union after a rough Weekend up north. Let's go to the first period. Bobcats on the power play. Avira Aston gets a play. He fires and he gets it past there. Bobcats up 1 0. Now, later in the period, Quinnipiac will take full advantage of Travis Traylor. He'll get it past the netminder. Bobcats up 2 0. Another goal will come later here as Jacob Quillen gets it from Andon Serpone. He gets it past three zip. Bobcats heading in. To the second period. Great way to bounce back from going to yeah. North Country. Union will pull themselves together, however, and they'll get one past Duplessis right here. They bring the score within two. But the Bobcats will bounce right back as Kristoff Fillion on the three on two drop pass sends it home right here, making the score 4 2 Bobcats. Nate Hanley, though, will respond for Union. He opens up in the high slot, he gets it in there 4 2 Bobcats. But after that, the third period was all Quinnipiac. Another Union turnover right here. We'll send Charles, uh, we'll get Charles Alexi Legault to get the puck right there, and he fires it past 
making it 5-2 Bobcats. Now let's head to the last minute of the period of the game, I'm sorry. As Jacob Quillen, he'll get on a breakaway, he'll get an empty net goal, making the score 6-2. The Bobcats will move on the next day. Sorry, Bobcats were sorry. After the win the Bob, on Friday, the Bobcats look to complete the weekend sweep against RPI on Saturday night. And as we get into the highlights, Bobcats engineers, let's just jump right into the first period. It was a crazy first period. Max Malinsky from the blue line opened the scoring. RPI, they get an early 1-0 lead. That win last is Colin Graff. What a great defensive poke check there. He's going to take it all the way to the net. What a shot there. Top right corner. Colin Graff ties it at one. A few minutes later, it's the Kristoff to Kristoff connection. Kristoff Billion, he finds the back of the net. 2-1 Bobcats. And before the end of the first period, Mason Marcellus, he sneaks it five hole past Jack Watson. Bobcats heading into the first intermission. They lead 3-1. And Colin Graff right off the rip, off the power play. Second goal of the night for him. And then just after that, Jacob Quillen sends it over to Jaden Lee. Then Mason Marcellus, he finds his second of the game as well. And then just a little bit later before the end of the first period, Jovar Tindling, he buries the pass off of the back, on the back door side. Engineers, he cut the lead to 5-2. And then the third period happens. Colin Graff, he gets his hat trick. Bobcats now lead 6-2. And oh my goodness, we all knew this was coming. Travis Trelor backhand deke through the legs, top right corner. What a shot from Travis Trelor. That was that all over. on Sports Center. Uh, it was all over Sports Center. Seven two is your final, of course, headlined by Graf's three goals, which of course is the hat trick in the lobby M and T Bank Arena on Saturday night. The Quinnipiac PRSSA was raising money for a charity through Chuck a Puck. Q 30s Gage Kilborn, he has more. Tonight, during the Quinnipiac men's ice hockey game against RPI, during the second intermission, the Quinnipiac PRSSA held a chuck -a puck event in order to spread awareness and raise money for the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Yeah, so we do chuck -a puck every year for the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. So we try and raise money to donate to them. We do it through chuck -a puck so participants have the opportunity to buy a puck. And at halftime, they get the opportunity to throw it on the center ice for a chance to win $200. Um, all the proceeds go to Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, so it's just a really good cause that we try and support every year. And it's great to do it on a men's hockey event like this because we get so many participants. The organization was able to raise over $1,700 for the CFF. Although the fundraiser saw a positive turnout, it allowed one member to reflect on how cystic fibrosis has impacted her life. My aunt actually has it, my cousins have it, so it's really close to home for me. It's a terrible respiratory uh, disease, um, and it messes with a whole lot of stuff, not just their breathing, but the rest of their body too, and it's terrible. So we're really glad to be able to donate to a uh, company like this. The exposure of the Chuck -a Puck event even trickled down to some of the players and coaches during the game. I think it's great. I didn't know anything about it. I don't. I don't get involved with that. You know, that's the first time I, I knew they always do stuff. But I think it's great. Anytime we can do anything for any of the charities out there, it's always it's always helpful. The PRSSA and the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation hope that this fundraiser is the step in the right direction to cure this horrible disease. Gage Kilborn, Q30 Sports. Thanks, Gage. Now back on the ice today. The ECAC Hockey released its weekly awards. Both Colin Graff and Mason Marcellus came away with accolades winning forward and rookie of the week respectively. Graff had an assist in three goals this weekend, which included his hat trick versus RPI Saturday night. Marcellus had two goals and an assist this weekend as well, and both players have won at least four awards this season in their respective categories. The Bobcats now look towards their final road game in ECAC hockey play against the Brown Bears this Friday. ECAC hockey also saw a ton of overtime games and upsets this past weekend. So let's take a look at where we stand in the standings with about two weeks to go in the regular season. Now in two weeks to go, Quinnipiac squarely, they hold the lead of the conference with 47 points and in second place trailing by nine is the Cornell Big Red, while Colgate, Clarkson, Union, Dartmouth, St. Lawrence, and Yale round out the top eight. The Bobcats can clinch the regular season championship in the Cleary Cup with a win at Brown on Friday night. The Bobcats' next opponent, of course, is Brown, who currently sits uh, second to last in the conference. Now, when we look from the conference to the national standings, the Bobcats really kind of struggle on that national, uh, on that, on the national scale. So let's take a look at the USCHO poll. 
This week, the Bobcats are back in the top eight and sit at number seven in the nation. Boston College continues its reign at number one, but for the first time this season as a unanimous number one team. Boston University, Denver, Michigan State, and North Dakota round out the top five. Wisconsin finds itself at six, while Minnesota rounds out the top eight in this week's poll. Cornell is currently the only other ECAC squad in the top 20 in the poll. But Zach, we got to take a break on Sports Buzz. Boy, you return. Got a lot of other action for you. Women's ice hockey, they head up to the Empire State to do a battle with RPI and Union for the final week of the regular season. And men's lacrosse held their home opener against Brown on Saturday, looking to start the season 2-0. We'll be back in a bit. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. Multiple studies have shown that marijuana can slow both driver reaction and response time, which can be really dangerous. He's here. He's here. Wait, wait, wait. What? I can't drive. Why? Why? My. I know what you're thinking. I need a job. I need a new career. Well, I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. I wasn't happy with what I was doing. After high school, I didn't have a plan. I just wanted to start working. I got laid off twice. But you got to keep going. You just need the right skills. Find an apprenticeship. I found a two-year IT program. I found a medical course online. I'm now a consultant in the tech space. You have more options than you think. You can do this. You will find something. You will find something new. Welcome back to Sports Pause. The Quinnipiac women's ice hockey team traveled to Troy to take on the RPI Engineers. After losing two games at home last weekend, the Bobcats bounced back with a 4-2 win over the Engineers. Jess Schreiber got the party started with her first period as she scored her 10th goal of the year. But the RPI, RPI tied things in the third off a goal of senior Maddie Papino. But the Bobcats blew the game open in the third, jumping ahead two by two goals from Alexa Hoskin and Maya Labad, holding on for the much needed win. Labai attacked on her second goal in an empty netter late in the third for her second multi goal game of the season. The next day, the Bobcats would take on the Union Garnet Chargers to finish off their regular season. And Quinnipiac finished the regular season strong as they steamrolled Union 6-1 in the final game before the playoffs. For five different Bobcats would go on to score in the game led by a two-goal performance from Alaska Hoskins. The Bobcats dominated the power play, scoring three times with the man advantage. Shriver made her impact in this game too, tallying three assists. The Bobcats finished the regular season with an overall record of 24-9-1. Well, March is still a few weeks away, folks, so everyone could use some bracketology in their lives. We are now joined in studio by women's ice hockey beat reporter Anthony Rossi. Anthony, how are we feeling today? I'm feeling pretty good. I'm glad to be back on Sports Pause. It's been a little bit, but I'm glad to be back and talk some women's ice hockey. So, first off, I'll take control here. Let's look at those national ranks in the USCHO poll. Let's see where Quinnipiac ranks this week. And they are ranking at number nine this week. Obviously, Ohio State has dominated all season long, racking up all 20 of those first place votes. And then the four ECAC teams that we see that I'm going to highlight throughout this entire segment is Clarkson, Colgate, Cornell, and St. Lawrence. They're the top four seeds in the ECAC, and they've been dominant all year long. You said it. Now, we're speaking about the ECAC playoffs here, let's take a look at what they have. Yeah, let's take a look at those standings really quickly. So obviously the number one team 
in the standings is Colgate. Obviously, they have Christina Kaltanikova, who is now suspended, is taking a leave off of Colgate. So that might affect them in the rest of the season, but not to worry. They still have Daniel Serdakny, Kaylee Osborne, Hannah Murphy. They're such a good team. Clarkson has a dominant missile, Pitsechnik and net. Princeton's a team to not be overlooked. Same with Yale. Yale is a really solid team with Pia Dukaric and Net Sarah Philly, who we've talked about numerous times, yeah. Andrew, that she's going to be probably the number one pick in the PWHL draft. Yeah, she definitely will be. And I also kind of like this, you know, when this Colgate team, they lost to Yale this past weekend as well. And you talk about this, the suspension, you know, you could, we could end up seeing this, the, the Final Four in Potsdam, New York. Yeah, it could be an interesting one. And speaking of that, let's take a look at the bracket. So with the bracket, we have Colgate being number one, Clarkson number two, St. Lawrence number three, Cornell number four. Any of these four teams could host the finals and the semifinals. Most likely it's looking to be Colgate or Clarkson as they've been dominant all year long. Last year we saw Yale be the host and we could see some big upsets. Harvard could upset Quinnipiac, Union could upset Yale, Princeton could get upset by Dartmouth. It's anybody's game in these tournaments. And I know last year the men's hockey team, their men's hockey teams, that is, Yale upset at number 11. So we could see that in the women's bracket as well. All right, well, Anthony, we thank you so much for your time. But let's switch from the ice to the hardwood as the Quinnipiac women's basketball team took on the mount at home. The Bobcats would fall to the mount by a score of 54-45 to on Thursday. The loss was Quinnipiac's second loss in as, five, in as many as five days. The Bobcats were led in scoring by first years Anna Foley and Carson Martin. With this win, both teams could not seem to find their shooting form as they combined for under 40% shooting from the field. The Mount passed the Bobcats in the standings and the Bobcats dropped to seventh in the MAC. Thursday was women's basketball team's annual pink game. For one first year, the cause means so much more for her and her family. Women's basketball beat reporter Brittany Brunt-Lieben has more. On Thursday, the Quinnipiac Bobcats took on the Mount St. Mary's Mountaineers and lost with the score of 54 to 45. Carson Martin played a great game with 12 points and two assists, but that was not the most important part of today's game. I, I, I love it. I enjoy it so much. And living far away from home is difficult, but having a family who's who's capable of being able to come up as much as they do, I really, really appreciate it. Um, and yeah. It's just, it's so amazing getting to see them every couple of months or every month, so it's nice. Martin's family explained how important it is to have role models in everyday life. You know, uh, I'm her grandma, so uh, we have all, I don't think it's any one person. Her whole family has been her biggest fan base her entire life. I think she started playing when she was seven or eight, so she's always had uh, many cheerleaders. So I know that that has contributed to her being confident in her game because she's always had that support. Uh, we come to see the whole team. It takes a team to win, so uh, everybody contributes. So um, yeah, we, we, she has the biggest fan base in Georgia, let me tell you, and that's her family. Martin explained the impact of having these role models in her life and what it means to her to be around them. Just by being amazing, amazing Christian women, um, they, faith is really, really important in my family, and seeing how they are with their family and their kids and raising them and um, it's really really inspirational because that's what that's how I want to be when even now but that's definitely how I want to be when I'm an adult. This was not only a special game in watching Martin play it also meant a lot to them supporting breast cancer awareness. I just lost my sister-in-law uh, April will be two years to breast cancer and it was, uh, it was hard watching her go through that but she struggled but she fought hard and she didn't let it get her down and um, we miss her dearly, but um, I can see the struggles in breast cancer. It's there. Yes. You know. Yeah. We were always there to support her. Yes. Yeah. I'm Brittany brown Lieben reporting for Q30 Sports. With a tough loss on Thursday, the women's basketball team looked to rebound in Riverdale against the Manhattan Jaspers. We begin to the highlights now. Bobcats, they took round one against Manhattan at home back in January. Both teams looking to bounce back in this game. We started in the first quarter, and we look at Ava Soleni from half court. Oh, man, she gets cool. it in. Look at that half court shot. We saw that on Sports Center a few nights ago. We sure Maybe did. Maybe see it top five later in the show, but we skipped to the fourth quarter here, and we kept it close throughout as Carson Martin in isolation takes it, pulls it from three. Manhattan in the waning seconds. Inez Jimenez Montserrat double drive. She gets it in. We'll win it to go. Shot off the glass. It's in. And Anna Foley with no waning seconds. The first year sensation from Andover Mass. 
What a play there. She's going to send this one to overtime. Bobcats tied 62. Heading in overtime in Manhattan. Struck first. It's Otzerk. She gets it in. Now in a shot over here. And we drives in. Shot is good. And look at there. A little bit more. And we have the waning seconds of overtime. And Manhattan drains it. And that'll probably be all. That'll be all she wrote in Riverdale, Manhattan. They take it in overtime. 72 to 66. Bobcats led by Anna Foley, first year sensation, her 28 points, which is a career high for her. Despite the two losses, one Bobcat managed to take home yet another Mac Weekly Award. Who else? Anna Foley, the first year forward, has earned her third straight Mac Rookie of the Week honor. Foley was a bright spot in the Bobcats' two losses this past week and averaging 21.5 points per game and seven rebounds per game. Her strongest performance came in the overtime loss in Manhattan when she led the team with 28 points, going 11 for 19 from the field. Foley also was perfect from the free throw line, going 6 for 6 in the game. Now moving away from the court, spring sports are officially underway in Hamden as the men's lacrosse team had their home opener this past weekend against a nationally acclaimed Brown team, according to the preseason polls. And we get into the highlight now. Lax is back in hand and Quinnipiac looking to keep the unbeaten start alive against the Brown Bears. The team, of course, like we said, home opener, shaking hands at center of the field. And we get into the first quarter now. Trevor, Do or excuse me, Ryan Donnery. He rifles it from the, on the bottom side of the net. Bobcats taking the lead. Look at that bench right there. They're absolutely buzzing over buzzing. there. Absolutely buzzing. And then a little bit later, Trevor Douglas, number 33. Look at this. Drops the shoulder, shoots it. Bang. Bobcats, they're going to head into the second quarter up 5-1. to one. But Brown, they're not going to let the Bobcats take it too easy. They get another goal and another goal. And as we head into the fourth quarter, they keep piling it on. And Brown, they're trying to mount a comeback here. But Mason Oak, I mean, what a save. This guy should have won, in my opinion, Defensive Player of the Week. But here we go. What a shot there from the Bobcats as they go and win this one in Hamden. 13-7, they start off the season 2-0. For the second week in a row, a Bobcat has won a MAC Men's Lacrosse Award. <clears throat> Steven Germain earned MAC Offensive Player of the Week after his 7-point performance against Brown. The senior forward earns the honor for the first time this season, allowing four goals and three assists against the Bears, adding to his now 10-point total on the season. Jermaine is additionally now up to 94 points in his Bobcat career. The Bobcats will now focus their attention to the Bryant Bulldogs this Saturday at noon at when they travel to Rhode Island. Well, that's all the time we have right now, but coming up after this. It's opening day for the Quinnipiac baseball team. They make the trek down to Lynchburg for a three-game set against the Liberty Flames of the CUSA. I wonder who shined the brightest on the Dobbin for the week. And top five plays of the week are up after that. We've got not one but two sports center clips for you this week, folks. Stay tuned. I think it's just vapor with flavor. It won't hurt my kid like cigarettes, right? Vaping is safer than smoking, isn't it? There's really not even that much nicotine in them, right? My kid? My kid? My kid knows it's dangerous. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping. Maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. I don't think that many kids in my son's school even do it. He makes fun of his friend who vapes. He would never try it. She's in the sock. She's on the honor roll. She's just on the table. No way. no way. No way. No way. My kid would never vape. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping. Maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Meet the scan. A simple procedure whose mission is to detect lung cancer early. but I feel fine. That's great, but you may still be at high risk for lung cancer. Oh man, that's a new fence. If you smoke, early detection could save your life. Learn more at SavedByTheScan.org. Type 2 diabetes can have a big impact on your life, but how can it be prevented? 
Well, the first step is knowing if you have prediabetes, a serious medical condition that puts you at high risk for type 2 diabetes. One in three American adults has prediabetes, but more than 80% don't know they have it. The good news is, prediabetes can be reversed. And for many people, healthy changes in their daily routine can make a big difference. Take the one-minute risk test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. Welcome back to Sports Pause. While there is still snow on the field, that doesn't mean we can't show some love to the rugby team. Last week, five Bobcats earned all NIRA status. Hannah, for, sorry, Hannah Fersh, Anna Van Dyke, Kat Story, and Gracie Cartwright were all named to all NIRA first team, and Reva Van Vandervalk was given an honorable mention. Vandervalk is expected to be the only returning member of the team next year, as the rest will graduate at the end of the May. The Bobcats lost to Dartmouth in the NIRA semifinals in November. Baseball season is right around the corner, and the MAC announced its preseason poll last week. The Bobcats find themselves in second just behind Fairfield. Canisius sits in third, while Ryder and Manhattan round out the top five. Niagara sits in sixth, just one spot below their 2023 finish. Mount St. Mary's is in seventh, and Maris takes the eighth spot. The bottom three consists of Iona in ninth, Siena in tenth, and St. Peter's brings up the rear, being placed 11th. Additionally, Keegan O'Connor and Sebastian Mula were named to the preseason All-MAC teams at catcher and third base, respectively. The Bobcats then kicked off their season in Lynchburg, Virginia this weekend to take on the Liberty Flames. The Bobcats did not have a good time in the mother of states, getting swept handedly. The Flames outscored the Bobcats 36-12 on the weekend despite the losses. Junior Christopher Willis hit his first home run as a Bobcat in Game 2 and first year Kyle Garbowski went yard in Game 3 for his first college homer as well. Sophomore transfer Gabe Wright also did well picking up three hits and two RBIs. The Bobcats will be in action, action in Spartanburg in South Carolina on Friday for the One Spartanburg Baseball Classic Tournament. Now from the Diamond to the Country Club, women's golf took part in the Atlantic Invitational. The Bobcats began their spring season finishing second in the Invitational. Graduate student Leanne Peralta led the efforts of the Bobcats finishing seventh in the Invitational with a score of nine over. Senior e uh, sorry, Amy Uchida tied for 13th place while junior Meg Yoshida took 15th on the weekend. The Bobcats will next be in action on March 11th to compete in the Butler Don Beanbow Spring Invitational in Oldsmar, Florida. Quinnipiac women's golfer Leanne Peralta earned MAC Women's Golfer of the Week last Wednesday. Peralta, Peralta led the Bo Quinnipiac Bobcats to second place finish at the Atlantic Invitational in Lake Worth, Florida. In round one, Peralta shot a 77 and a 70 in round two. Her placement helped Quinnipiac to a second place finish in the tournament out of 17. She birdied on nine holes tied for the second best in the field. This award is in her addition to two uh, MAC Golfer of the Month awards that she won in the fall season. Peralta looks to lead the Bobcats to yet another MAC championship later this spring as the three-time back-to-back-to-back rating champions. Now, top plays, let's roll them. All right, let's get into it, Arnold. Play number five, men's basketball versus Niagara. J.J. Riggins sets the screen. Matt Belong drains it from the top of the key. What a shot there from Belong. Number four, women's ice hockey is taking on Union right now. As we see uh, Maya Labag get a send a behind the net pass to Alexa Hoskins to put the Bobcats up. And play number three, baseball versus Liberty. Gabe Wright goes deep into foul territory and makes the catch at the wall. Bobcats ended up losing that one 10 to nothing. Now play number two, we have women's basketball versus Manhattan. Ava Saloni all the way from the logo, bang! Showing some curry range right there. The Bobcats would lose in overtime. And play number one, guess what? Travis Trelor, backhanded windmill deke. Oh my goodness, through the legs, top right corner. I think we need to set one more again. Oh. Look at that, through the legs, hits it, top right corner. That one was all over SportsCenter this week and it, Twitter. It sure was, and number two was also at SportsCenter. All right, well, that's another sports pause in the books for us. As always, thank you so much to the producers and everyone behind the scenes who make the show possible. And thank you to you at home for watching. Follow us on social media at Q30 Sports and visit us online at Q30TV.com. He's Zach Sokager. I'm Andrew Reynolds. Good night, Bobcats.